This is a uh, elaborate front of a closed garden off of Nanlu Gujiang. Chi Yuan Garden. Residence of a minister, imperial household apartment, Lei Ching. House consists of three rows of courtyards in the garden besides rockeries, pools, bridges, and pavilions. There is a boat-shaped pavilion in the style of structures in a garden south of the Yangtze. Boat-shaped pavilion. There's a big one over at the uh, Summer Palace. It's the one Shiji spent the money. She was going to redo the Imperial Navy and modernize it. And uh, she spent it on a big rock boat for Summer Palace. It's way out on the other side of Beijing. And the Chinese got their ass handed to them by the Japanese who had modernized their navy. <laughs> symbol of, uh, it's, to me, the biggest symbol of uh, the Qing uh, incompetence uh, during the uh, stranglehold em Empress Dowager Shiji had on uh, the late uh, Qing dynasty for uh, China threw off its shackles of uh, semi-colonialism and semi-imperialism and uh, feudalism, semi-feudalism really. This former mansion, Garden of Meng Shan, Qing Dynasty, appointed minister, imperial household department, deep pockets, rockery pool, pavilion tower, bridge temple in the garden, as well as unique boat-shaped spacious pavilion integrated with architectural art of Jiangnan Garden. The area south of the Yangtze they call the Jiang, Jiang, Jiangnan. Uh, Jiang is river and Nan is south, so South River, or south of the South River, the area south of the Yangtze. Republican period, the garden covered an area 2,000 meters square, sold off by Mingshan family at a later generation, leaving only the rockery hung with stone tablets of Qi Yuan Garden East Corner. It's a protected unit, so it's got one of these signs. Beijing's become aware that it can't tear down all this stuff, or else it'll be left with the... Uh, Shanghai, I think, has some of that problem too. He starts tearing down to redevelop these old, uh, older buildings. And you're left with a uh, urban wasteland with no character, which might become historic in another couple hundred years, you know. <laughs> So I'm appreciating the hutongs a little bit more. When I first got to Beijing, I have to admit, the car service that the hostel provided from the airport zipped me right to Nanlu Gujiang, which is this main strip here. And I thought, ah, this is, this is the famous hutong area that I decided to stay in for a month. It's lined with cheap uh, shops, you know. Um, but if you go off Nanlu Gu, into the who actual hutongs. I mean, this is a oh, pedestrianized shopping street. Oh, oh, no. And uh, unlike a lot of the pedestrianized shopping streets in China, instead of turning it into an old Qing style street, um, they have uh, modern shops with some character, but they're mostly, you know, just small um, modern commercial things selling snacks. And it gets super duper crowded, that's the other annoying thing. I have to walk down it every day. After uh, I get home and it's super crowded, it's really annoying. Right now it's not busy at all. But you feel like, I feel like I'm playing American football again, dodging around people, finding little pockets to walk through. Um, so there are a couple other historic places to see. I've done Mao Dun, former residence. That's open. And now I think I will go check out the uh, woman who married Pu Shi was from here. I don't know if her house is open. I dropped the pin there. This East Shore Live Jazz Club, I thought I found it one night, but I don't think it actually was the East Shore Live, Live Jazz Club. I don't know exactly where it is. I did find the Great Leap Brewing. That's a definite. This one I thought I found and popped in, but I think it was just a small bar or something. Not sure where it is. Um, 
Let's see, so we'll walk down Nanlugu, and then we'll stop in here, Memorial Hall, and there's another one down here for Prince Sang, who is a general. The idea of the hutongs can be easily explained off Nanlugu, Jiang, Jiang's alley, right? Then hutong is also another word for alley, but it's usually a smaller, although you see Jiang used too, but uh, the hutong is the famous word, like in Shanghai, they like to use Lilong uh, for a lot of the little alleyways, traditional style living. The hutongs, you have to keep in mind, are uh, China 1.0. Meaning, if you have an agricultural society, everybody's out in the field, right? Living in rural villages. People move to a city and they live in these courtyard homes called Si Hua Yuan. Si Hua Yuan and um, you have uh, in modern times problems with plumbing and uh, people have to use communal bathrooms a lot of the time so you get a lot of strange smells in the hutongs and the commercialization that's there, the little bars and shops tend to be like uh, maybe somebody opened it up in their house, you know, a little restaurant or something. So it's the first inklings, you know, of commercialism. And then this would be like China 2.0, where it's like, okay, we're going to like pedestrianize the street and we're going to have a commercial zone and it's all commercial, you know, there's an a uh, theater school here too. China Art Aca uh, Theater Academy or something like that. A lot of uh, foreign schools have uh, affiliations with this place. China 3.0 would be like out by San Latun, where the village is anyway. The bar street is sort of like this in San Latun, a little bit chintzy and um, a little seedy even. And that'd be like the transition between 2.0, 3.0, and then San Latun, the bar side of the street on San Latun, still a little seedy. Then right across the street, they've got a department store set up with an open village type department store. And you've got an Apple store and all that kind of stuff. That's China 3.0. There's basically no difference between that and any place you'd go to in the West, you know? So. San Latun's really not that seedy. It's much more laid back than, uh, or um, Nan is much more laid back than San Latun in terms of the bars here. They're smaller, they're in courtyards, they're nicer for a chat. San Latun's bar streets and nightlife is seedy, but the mall culture there is what's taking over. So it's an interesting contrast between 2.0 and 3.0 in San Latun Village, which is out west of here. You could walk out that way on the Go Street, which has a lot of restaurants. And uh, you'd get a good example. Let's record this track. I haven't recorded U Air, Vill U Air Alley yet. Ah, oh, here's a little hostel, huh? Peking, it's part of the Peking Youth Hostel. The Peking Youth Hostel is a little more expensive than where I'm staying at the downtown Beijing Backpackers. So I'll go eat at the restaurant when I want a nice steak dinner. Since the restaurant next door to the downtown Beijing Backpackers is not the greatest for a good meal. And uh, I have to admit I haven't gone into the hutongs too much. I've eaten a couple times at some restaurants in here, but a lot of them probably actually have an English language menu I could point out, but you know, you get home and you're tired and you don't want to go off Nan Lugu, so you'll go uh, to the easiest place, even if it's much more expensive. But you should venture into here. It's more fun if you have a friend with you, I think, to walk down the street, find a little hole in the wall. Grandma's Kitchen I've eaten at, which is down this way. That's pretty good. I think it's a chain now. 
They're making like some kind of cartoon series based on it called Grandma's Kitchen. They have a big mural. They say they're the first animation based. Uh... See, this is China like 1.0. Just a little shop in somebody's uh, courtyard, front courtyard, you know, of a Sihuan where you might have a generation, a couple generations living together. And then Nanlu Gu, that's like more 2.0. We're going to commercialize this whole zone. And then, you know, you get into the 3.0. It's like, oh, okay, we're going to have big box development. Huge retailers come in and totally redevelop a whole area and knock everything down and redevelop it. So now we're at the Memorial Hall of Chi Bai Shi. Probably have to buy a ticket, it looks like, huh? 5 UN. Tuesday to Sunday. Courtyard number 13 in Yu Er Hu Tang was originally the mansion of Yi Bushu, Emperor Taijong's fourth son in Qing Dynasty. It is a complete single courtyard, 1955, under the care of Premier Zhou Anlai. The Ministry of Culture bought it, restored. Later changed the Beijing Art Academy, 86. Listed as Dongcheng District Cultural Relic Protection Unit, 2012. Restored by Beijing Art Academy, renamed Chi Bai Shi Former Residence Memorial. So we will uh, take an exploration here. They have this listed as Memorial Hall. You know, I never know where to break up the syllable. How it's going to be listed is separate or not. I like breaking up the syllables as long as it doesn't get ridiculous, you know. Memorial Hall of Chi Bai Shi's former residence. Right there. It's important to make, so I'll use that later to label my YouTube video. Fiverr. We don't Go ahead. No. Okay. Free? Is it free? Yesterday I went out to the Great Wall. Today not so clear, I'm wearing my face mask. But uh, even though it was three hours away, I went to the Jing, Jin uh, Xinling area of the Great Wall and hiked to Simatai. The tour guide said if it's smoggy in Beijing, it'll be smoggy there. So I didn't want to exert myself nor waste the three hour trip, six hour, six hours round trip out there if I wasn't going to, uh, looks like a pomegranate tree there. If it wasn't going to have a clear day, it would be unhealthy and it wouldn't be the greatest view. But yesterday was very clear. You get them every uh, week, you might get one day. This time of year anyway. Art is a brilliant pearl. Hmm. Brought Chinese Traditional Artworks International Art Communication. There's an artist in the Hu Tong nearby here who won a uh, award at the Pan Pacific Panama Exposition. Maybe it was the Panama Exposition for a picture of a horse. And then I read about another famous artist who is known for his horse paintings who has a, uh, off Dong Men Street, he has a residence, a former residence to visit. He does watercolors of horses. So this area has some small artists uh, homes you can visit. Xingtang County in Hunan. He, Hunan. Yesterday I actually was in Hebei province. We crossed into Hebei province just barely for the hike. <laughs> Tough shows how far north we went. We went out of Beijing municipality.
Pastured Asian buffalo. Hmm. Grandmother bought him a little copper ring tied around his neck. Family would know he came back safely when the ring sound approached. Hmm. Wrote a poem. The meaning of the poem is from the ring sound I know grandmother's love. Now I became an old man who waiting the ring sound to. Hmm. Eighteen seventy, Chi Bai Shi began to go to school. Grandfather sent him to school every morning and picked him up every afternoon. So he's very much wistful and filial, huh? Homesickness, love of the old house. Long Sham Poetry Group, huh? Poetry, calligraphy, painting, and seal cutting. Seal cutting was kind of reintroduced, I think, in the late uh, Qing period, mid to late Qing period. From what I saw at the Chop Museum over in uh, Westlake, Hangzhou, they have a seal carver society museum that said it kind of had fallen out of the literati, and then it was reintroduced mid to late Qing, along with the painting, calligraphy, poetry. Too weak to afford heavy farm work, father left, let him learn carpentry. Still too weak to handle heavy tools, so he learned joinery and gradually got good at wood carving skills. Bamboo sculpture. Finished his joinery, bed lintel carved by him. Mountain and water, seventh from Chi Bai Shi. Mustard seed garden, manual of painting. Screen. 1878, Chi Bai Shi began to learn joinery skills. This is his toolbox. Studying a poetry and painting. After 30 years old, Chi Bai Shi gradually became famous. His painting brought his family a lot of income after arriving in Peking. The old name for Beijing wrote calligraphy Chang Wu, which means be able to earn food through painting. Chang Wu was written by Chi Bai Shi, 1923. Until 38 years old, Chi Bai Shi had wrote several hundred poems in his house. Ji Shan Yin Guan, 1898, learned poems from Wang Hu Chai, Hu, Hu Chi, made great improvement. 1904, visited Nan Chang with his teacher. Found studio's name not fit the poem, deleted the word yin in the former name, calligraphy, Ji Shan Guan, Road Mountain with Guan, written by Chi Bai Shi, Dragon Mountain Poem. 1894, Chi Bai Shi and his friends rented several houses and established the Dragon Mountain Poem Group. The painting is a recording of the event. Painted at age 70 there, Ji Shan Yi Guang. Five Journeys. Friends Invitation made Five Journeys, 1902. Traveled almost half of China, period called Five Journeys. Chance to see old master paintings and great nature scenery. These experiences bring Chi Bai Shi a lot of feelings, which became the source of his mountain and water painting source resource. After the period, Chi Bai Shi settled down and focused on painting in his hometown. The 10 years at home was very important because after thinking, learning, contemplation, Chi gradually changed from a local painter to literati painter. Chi Garden Diary, Guangzhou Province, 1909. At teacher's request, Chi Bai Shi repainted Hua Mountain on Fan, Ji Shan album, Painting Osifrage. First journey, let's see, Beijing, Tangjing, Songjiang, Changsha, Cheyenne. Sounds like what a couple that I met the other day when they were checking out were about to do. Similar route. Second journey from Changsha, Xuzhang to Nanchang. 
Shangsha, this is his third journey. Gulen, Wuzhou, Guangzhou, Qinzhou. Fourth journey, Changsha, Wuzhou, Chaoqing, uh, Zhouqing, Qingzhou, Dongqing, Dongxing. Fifth journey, Jiang, Ning, Suzhou, Songjiang. Songjiang is just outside Shanghai. Songjiang District. That's where Shan, the, uh, was it Shansha Observatory Mountain and Cathedral is? Right? Songjiang District. Out towards Chibo. Chibao. Changsha, Guangzhou, capital of Canton or Guangdong. Xiangang, Qinzhou. After the five journeys, Chi Bai Shi settled down and focused on painting in his hometown. The ten years in a home, very important because after thinking, learning, contemplation, Chi gradually changed from local painter to literati painter. After five journeys, Chi Bai Shi finished the Jishan album in 1910. The painting is the number 19 of the album. Chi Bai Shi studied in Li Shan, Jinnang. Shitao Badashanran. <laughs> Sounds like India. Audience can find Badashanran's influence in the paintings. Lotus, actually, it was painted by Chi Bai Shi, 1915. When painting flower and bird paintings, Chi Bai Shi emphasized on observation and drawing sketches. The painting Hibiscus was painted in 1916. You can see here that. Integral relationship between uh, painting, calligraphy, poetry. They're all intertwined. There's really very little separation traditionally between the three in uh, Chinese art, Chinese um, 19th uh, up to about the 19th century, and like little bits of modern art. Uh, Western influence cut start creeping in. Certificate World Peace Commission, 1955. He looks like an old sage, doesn't he? Let's see who's he with here. Travel notes, chronolog chronology. <clears throat> a letter from Xu Bi Xu Beijing is that Beihang Su Su Beihang <clears throat> removed and changed art style. Here is with Mi Lam Fang, whose residence museum is not too far from here. It's on the other side of the lakes on the other side of Back Lakes area, which is a nice walk through the Hutong to here. In summertime, it's the most happening place, I think, in Beijing for nightlife. A little loud and gaudy. A lot of nightclubs, karaoke bars out that way. Lotus Market, it's all worth visiting. Let's see, introduced by friends. He was a Don, uh, Mai Lam Fong. He's played the young girl women's role in uh, East Asian uh, opera um, because of issues with prostitution, the same that you had in like Elizabethan England, the uh, women's roles had to be played uh, first by young boys, but they still had problems with prostitution of the young boys. They had grown men playing the young women's role. So they were the most celebrated actors because of how, you know, much of a stretch they would, ha and how much they would have to learn, and the styles they developed. Milan Fong was known for developing his own school of character there. A lot of these people would be generation after generation of playing the character. You see that in Japan as well. Sometimes like 16 generations or even more generations of families playing. When you first visit Tokyo, actually, and you go to uh, the Chiba Prefecture, where the airport is there, You'll see the temple there in Narita is associated with where people go to pray to have a male heir so that they could continue their, their line to have another person play the, the role of female. 
it's kind of interesting. So if they had a female daughter, she would not be allowed to play the female. So they wanted a male heir, but to be able to play a uh, <laughs> female role. Chen Shi Zheng, Autumn Ho Tat painting. During Qi's late years, Qi Bai Shi had created his distinguished art language, which used fine brush paint insects and use of freehand brush paint flowers. The paintings named Bees and Flowers, fourth of the insect album, finished 1924. Nineteen twenty eight when Shu Bai Hong president Bei Hong Shu Bei Hong Chi Bai Shi was appointed as professor in Art College Peking University. Nineteen seventeen Chen Shi Zheng had wrote inscription on Chi's painting Ink Plum Blossom, encouraged him to make innovation instead of copying the artist Yin Hebo. To escape the turmoil of his hometown, he settled Beijing 1919, made friends with Chen Shi Zheng, who advised Qi to find his own way in art. He decided to change his styles. After the then years, he created a strong comparison style named Red Flower and Black Leaves. 1922, his friend brought him paintings, brought, brought his paintings to the Sino Japanese Joint Painting Exhibit in Japan. And Chi's paintings were all sold out with high prices, big success for him, won widespread reputation, more people want to buy his paintings. 1927, invited by then Fong Mian, headmaster of National Beijing Art Academy, Chi Bai Shi, taught Chinese painting, Lin School, second year, school renamed Art College Peking University, appointed as professor. Photo of Chi Bai Shi taken mid 1940s and scrapped 1950. Yet so much more out of these former residences when they have English in the translation. So his famous years, huh? Endured during the Japanese occupation. But that wasn't a fun time. <clears throat> the anti Japanese war really starts the Japanese occupation in 31. The Marco Polo Bridge is 37 and it's all out war until 1945. And it's civil war until 1949 again with the nationalists and communists. Let's see. Put notice, meaning paint sales stopped at House Gate to avoid meeting with Japanese and puppet troops. During the period, Chi Bai Shi painted every day, formed his unique art style. 45, after any Japanese war ended, stepped into a new stage of his life. 46, sponsored by Chinese Association of Art. Chi Bai Shi's works exhi exhibition was held in Nanjing, and Chi Bai Shi went to Nanjing for that exhibition in person. I guess at this stage, Nanjing was still the capital. The exhibition was moved to Shanghai later. All the works displayed had been sold out. Exhibition got a big success. 1940, Chi Bai Shi wrote his autobiography. Relative to French, 1941, May 4th. May 4th uh, is his birthday, huh? It's nice. The May the 4th movement is a big deal in China for communism. Relatives and friends, Peking invited to attend ceremony of giving Hu Bo Ju status of wife. Hmm. Li Karen formerly became a student of Qi Bai Shi. Pictures showed a manuscript chronicle with who she presented. She by she, 1948. 1940, in order to refuse Japanese puppet extortion of paintings, she by she put up a notice on the gate. And the general meaning is if you're officers, no matter at home or abroad, and want to buy my paintings, you don't have to come in person, just send a representative. It is always not good for officers visiting a civilian's house, especially not good for the host. I will not meet you, even if you insist on meeting. He stood up for himself and for China, I guess. Great artist of the era, 1950 to 57. Chairman Mao invited him to Jiangnan High. They had dinner together. What's that? Middle South Lake? That's uh, the Front Lakes area, which uh, 
used to be part of the imperial city but they demol started demolishing the walls around there in 50 50 let's see during the dinner all sorts of feelings well up in his mind 53 more than 200 celebrities a Beijing cultural field got together at the culture club to celebrate his birthday during the banquet was awarded people's artist ministry culture Joe on lie presented and talked closely with Chi Bai Shi foundation of people's republic china Chai Bishi felt very pleased, kept painting every day, hard work and creativity, one of the greatest artists, 20th century Chinese art. 1950, Chi Bai Shi gave President Mao Zedong a painting, Eagle, which finished 1941 as a gift. I guess, symbol of authority. 1951, often kept in touch with his friends, Lao Shi had invited Chi Bai Shi to paint with the title of poems. Lao Shi is a... Uh, bureaucrat who decided to open up a tea house to put young boys to work. It's down off Tiananmen Square, south uh, west corner Tiananmen Square. Make sure you visit it. They do shows every night of uh, Kung Fu tea where they pour the tea from a distance and all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. I haven't done it, but I've seen a couple pictures. I did go into the, the tea house, walk around. They have some exhibits. Frog Boys from, from Fountain, Plum Blossom Winter. Bum, bum, bum. Frog voice from fountain, unique painting. See strong creativity in his late years. Famous writer and literator. Fifty six ceremony. International peace bonus. Held Beijing. Gumuru. Vice Chairman. World Peace Council. Opening speech. 54, photo taken after visiting exhibition, 5th October, Alexander Mikhailovich, Gerasimov, President USSR, Art Research Academy, Wright, Wuju Ren, Vice Chairman, Chinese Art Association on the left. 7th January, awarded People's Artist, Ministry of Culture. There he is with Joe online. Friendly talk during the banquet. Passed away. 1957, September 16th. Is that today? Today is his birthday. It is the anniversary of his death day. Not his birthday. And today is the 16th. No oh, shit. <laughs> so that's a. Uh, let's see, he died. 50 plus uh, 7, so he died 57 years ago in 1957. Wow. January 1958, Shi Bai Shi, posthumous artworks exhibition, Beijing Soviet Union Exhibition Hall, John Lei visiting, Huai Chen Wu, company the tour. 1982, artist Lee Kuchan, Lee Karen, commemorate Chi Bai Shi at his tomb. 22, 1957, September 22nd, 1957, people from different circles, Jai Shing Temple, memorial ceremony, Zhou Anlai, Chen Yi, other national leaders, cultural celebrities, representatives from different embassies, Chi Bai Shi students took part in the ceremony. After he passed away, according to his testament, cheese painting collections of Delhi staff donated to Nation, Beijing Fine Art Academy preserved these paintings where they are today, I guess. 2010 International Forum. Hmm. Yuan Hutong was purchased by the government, 55. Passed away at the hospital, so he didn't die here, I guess, huh? Beijing Exhibition Center is what the name of the Soviet Union Exhibition Hall is today. Mm -mm -mm, they plan the museum. Chi Bai Shi Memorial. I, I just like it better when they say Chi Bai Shi Memorial Museum rather than the former residence, you know? 
Memorial Museum gives you the idea that he probably lived here, you know. It's not just housing his art collection, which I actually really don't have anything here from. So here you can see what I was describing earlier. This is a typical Sihue Yuan. They've got uh, drinks available and snacks. But it's an open courtyard design and then you've got uh, houses along the sides essentially. Sometimes they're double courtyards. Oh, it looks like they have some artwork there. Hello. There's a lot of Islamic motifs that you see in Chinese art because of the Silk Road. Point something out here too and I was talking about the air quality. I don't know if it comes out, but you can see the contrast of the darkness around the mask and then the white here. This is from two weeks. It's been two weeks today. And I haven't had this mask. I've probably had this mask actually maybe only for a little less than that. So you can see how much filth is here that's been captured by it versus at the corners where none of the air I'm breathing in traps, traps dirt. So look how dirty that is in the center. All that would be in my lungs if I didn't have this. Are you going to be here three days? Fine. Don't worry about it. But... I'm going to live here. Imagine breathing that much in. Hello. Hello. Wisteria. Chrysanthemums. Crayfish. Birds and blossoms. Maybe pomegranates. Pine tree. Crayfish again. Maybe a monk. Another monk, flower pot. Gift shop. So there's much more to this uh, Hutong uh, museum than any of the others in the area. There are several to visit. It's frustrating though, none of them are listed completely on any map that I've had or in any guidebook I've found. I've had to consult um, several different online maps from Google Maps to uh, third party apps.
There's the eagle. Cool. Well, That's it, I'll start a new video. I'm gonna walk over to the other uh, Prince uh, Jang's place. I'll make a video there. Then I'm gonna get on the, the bus, I think, and head down to the Natural History Museum and finish what I didn't see the other day at the Ancient Architecture Museum at the uh, Xuanang Altar. So I am, I'm appreciate, I'm appreciating now a bit more the hutong, definitely. I think I'll go to a kung fu show tonight too, over at the Red Theater down off uh, the west side of Tiantan. So I'll be down in that area at the end of the day. Mine are uh, China 1.0. Meaning, if you have an agricultural society, everybody's out in the field, right? Living in rural villages. People move to a city, and they live in these courtyard homes called Si Hua Yuan. Si Hua Yuan, and um, you have, uh, in modern times, problems with plumbing and uh, people have to use communal bathrooms a lot of the time so you get a lot of strange smells in the hutongs and the commercialization that's there the little bars and shops tend to be like uh, maybe somebody opened it up in their house you know a little restaurant or something so it's the first inklings you know of commercialism and then this would be like China 2.0 where it's like okay we're gonna like pedestrianize the street and we're gonna have a commercial zone and it's all commercial you know there's an, a theater school here too China Art Aca uh, Theater Academy or something like this is a uh, elaborate front of a closed garden off of Nanlu Guzhiang Qi Yuan Garden. Residence of a minister, imperial household apartment, Lei Qing. House consists of three rows of courtyards in the garden besides rockeries, pools, bridges, and pavilions. There is a boat-shaped pavilion in the style of structures in a garden south of the Yangtze. Boat-shaped pavilion. There's a big one over at the uh, Summer Palace. It's the one Shiji spent the money. She's going to redo the Imperial Navy and modernize it. And uh, she spent it on a big rock boat for Summer Palace, way out on the other side of Beijing. And the Chinese got their ass handed to them by the Japanese who had modernized their navy. <laughs> symbol of, uh, it's, to me, the biggest symbol of uh, the Qing uh, incompetence uh, during the uh, stranglehold em Empress Dowager Shiji had on uh, the late uh, Qing dynasty for uh, China threw off its shackles of uh, semi-colonialism and character which might become historic in another couple hundred years you know <laughs> so I'm appreciating the hutongs a little bit more when I first got to Beijing I have to admit the car service that the hostel provided from the airport zipped me right to 
Nan Lu Gu Jiang, which is this main strip here. And I thought, eh, this is this is the famous Hutong area that I decided to stay in for a month. It's lined with cheap uh, shops, you know. Um, but if you go off Nan Lu Gu into the Hu actual Hutongs, I mean, this is a pedestrianized shopping street. And uh, unlike a lot of the pedestrianized shopping streets in China, instead of turning it into an old Qing style street, um, they have uh, modern shops with some character, but they're mostly, you know, just small um, modern commercial things selling snacks. And it gets super duper crowded. That's the other annoying thing. I have to walk down it every day. After uh, I get home and it's super crowded, it's really annoying. Right now it's not busy at all. But you feel like, I feel like I'm playing American football again, dodging around people, finding little pockets to my imperialism. And uh, feudalism, so my feudalism really. This former mansion, Garden of Ming Shan, Qing Dynasty, appointed minister, imperial household department, deep pockets. Rockery Pool Pavilion Tower Bridge Temple in the Garden, as well as unique boat-shaped spacious pavilion integrated with architectural art of Jiangnan Garden. The area south of the Yangtze they call the Jiang, Jiang Jiangnan. Uh, Jiang is river, and Nan is south, so South River, or south of the South River, the area south of the Yangtze. Republican period, the garden covered an area 2,000 meters square, sold off by Ming Shan family at a later generation, leaving only the rockery hung with stone tablets of Qi Yuan Garden East Corner. It's a protected unit, so it's got one of these signs. Beijing's become aware that it can't tear down all this stuff, or else it'll be left with the... Uh, Shanghai, I think, has some of that problem, too. He starts tearing down to redevelop these old, uh, older buildings. And you're left with a, uh, urban wasteland with no care to walk through. Um, so there are a couple other historic places to see. I've done Mao Dun, former residence. That's open. And now I think I will go check out the uh, woman who married Pu Shi was from here. I don't know if her house is open. I dropped the pin there. This East Shore Live Jazz Club, I thought I found it one night, but I don't think it actually was the East Shore Live, J Live Jazz Club. I don't know exactly where it is. I did find the Great Leap Brewing. That's a definite. This one I thought I found and popped in, but I think it was just a small bar or something. I'm not sure where it is. Um, let's see. So we'll walk down Nanlu Gu. And then we'll stop in here. Memorial Hall. And there's another one down here for Prince Sang, who is a general. The idea of the Hutongs can be easily explained off Nanlu Gu. Jiang. Jiang's alley, right? And Hutong is also another word for alley, but it's usually a smaller Although you see Jiang used too, but uh, the Hutong is the famous word. Like in Shanghai, they like to use Lilong uh, for a lot of the little alleyways, traditional style living. The Hutongs, you have to keep them.